Dear students, in this session, we will see an overview of how a home electric system works with illustration of various components in the system. Electricity has become an essential part of contemporary life. Energizing lights, appliances, heat, air conditioners, telephone, computers and many other modern conveniences. Do you know where does this electricity in our house come from? We will get it from local utility company in this particular area in Balgam. We will get the electricity from the Hescom. Then we will see how exactly we are getting the electricity to our the consumer end. A typical domestic wiring system is shown here. You can see here we have got tapping the electricity from the state electricity from, from the pole. Then the live wire, there are two wires, one is the line, another one is a neutral wire. In series with the line wire, we have got a main fuse, then it is bring to the, the consumer premises, it is first connected to the electricity meter. It reads the how many number of units you are consumed in a month so that based on that we are paying the, the electricity bill. From the meter we have got a main switch and from the main switch it goes to the distribution board. From the distribution board we are connecting to different appliances here. The purpose of the, all these equipments we will take up one by one. The main fuse is it is used to protect the, the whole system. The meter is the electricity meter is used to measure the how, how many number of units you are consumed. Then main switch, suppose if you want to any maintenance in this part or if any fault occurs or if you want to make the, some alternation something like that, you have to cut off the electricity to this whole portion in that case you have to make use of this main switch. And distribution board is a distributing the electrical energy to the different appliances with a systematic manner and to protect the different the circuits involved in the system. For example, in the distribution board, we have got drawn two different lines. One is called as lighting load. The another one is called as power load. That is a power load. Means from the main switch, from based on the total the load consumed here, that on based on that we are fixing the capacity of the there is a circuit breaker here. From this circuit breaker, miniature circuit breaker, we have got two lines. One is go to the lighting light side. Here you are using a lesser capacity wire so that the, the electricity what it is drawing from this line is a small because it is only utilized for lighting the, the system. Whereas there is another parallel line is drawn from the this distribution board with a higher current rating because it is used for your you can call the washing machine or for kitchen purposes that are grinding and other things or you can make use for the, work, the air conditioning, all those things. It is called as the power line, it is lighting load, whereas this wire from this has have got a higher capacity because they are, this is drawing a higher current. This is a rough sketch of the, the how exactly we are getting the electricity to our the consumer end, from the consumer end to the different appliances. From the electricity board, we are getting the electricity, then it goes to the, the uh, consumer premises through a a wire that we are discussing in detail. Then there is an energy meter, main switch, distribution board and we are connecting inter all the loads. This is a typical diagram of a the system, the electrical system. We know that we have got a electricity we are getting nearby our area or near to the our household. Then from that we are drawing the two wires. One is called as the phase wire which is connected to the input to the the energy meter, input terminals of the energy meter. There is another line which is drawing here, it is called as the neutral wire. Then from the, the energy meter, then we are connecting to the switch. That is what we are shown here. The switch here, uh, sorry, switch here. Okay. From the switch, we are having a main distribution, the 
we need a circuit breaker. It is a total current carrying capacity of the whole load is on this. Then from this we have got a sub circuits here 1, 2, 3, 4. From here you are connecting to individual the load. The first load which is connected through a switchboard to the, the load. Okay, you are getting the supply here. Then it is passed through the energy meter. Then to the switch. Then the main circuit breaker or you can call a distribution board. Then these are the sub circuit. Ultimately from each sub circuit you are connecting to the, the individual appliances. Then the, the first the component in the system what we have seen here is the fuse here. Then what is the function of the fuse? An electric fuse is a safety device. That is, it is protecting from the circuit when there is a short circuit occurs or if there is any overloading in the system and ultimately this the fuse is a wire having a very low melting point and high resistance it will melt if it is exceeds a particular limit then it will melt so that it disconnect the, the system so that they are protecting the our appliances the capacity of fuse uh, usually it is in terms of 1 amperes, 2 amperes, 3 amperes, 5 amperes, 10 amperes and 15 amperes and so on depending upon the, the total load. Then the second the component in the system is the meter or energy meter. The energy meter which is used to measure the energy that is the energy is usually measured in terms of kilowatt hour that is 1 kilowatt hour is equal to 1 unit. You are paying our electricity bill based on each units. That is 25 units, 30 units, 50 units. 50 units means what? It is a 50 kilowatt hour of energy you are consumed in a month. The based on the tariff, then you are paying the, the electricity bill. Then ultimately, the function of the energy meter to measure the, the total energy consumed in a particular period. The energy is the total power consumed at the utility by the load at a particular interval of time. It is used in domestic as well as industrial AC circuit for measuring the power consumption. Ultimately, it is used the, to measure the how much energy you are consumed. The next important component in the system is the distribution. What we are calling is the distribution board. An electrical distribution board is a crucial part in the electrical installation because it distributes the power supply evenly throughout the, the building by different sub circuits. The incoming power has to be controlled properly in this manner to prevent any overloads. You should you are preventing from it is systematically distribute the, the electrical energy to different appliances with different circuit. For example, why they are making a subdivision here? Because if there is anything happens in this one particular circuit, this circuit breaker only switch it off so that the other will work without any hamper. Okay. Then the main function of this distribution board is the evenly supplying the electricity to the, the all the sub circuits. This is a function of the electrical distribution board. Then the main important thing is that service lines or service means that is how exactly you are getting the electricity that is the wire which is connecting from the state electricity board or a distribution company to the consumer premises the consumer premises this wire is called as the service wire that is shown here that is the wire which is we are drawn see here we are drawn the the two wires here one is here the another one is here that is one is line the another one is the neutral then the one more wire we are seeing here that is what we are calling is GI, GI wire to to support the these two wires the strengthening the, the total because it has to withhold the, the span of from the pole to the the consumer end then this is service maze that is the wire which is connecting from the distribution company premises or it is called as a, from the pole to the consumer end that what we are calling is service means. The same thing is explained here. The normal cable which is connected between the distributors that is in this area it is called as a SCOM that is Oblay Electricity Board 
and consumer load terminal called a service line or service mains. In other words, it is also defined as the cable which has been connected to L1 kV power lines. Actually, we are getting at the pole it is L1 kV, then it is stepped down to 440 AC or 230 volts single phase AC supplies. Because for household we are using a single phase supply, therefore we are drawing only the two wires, one is a line, the another one is the neutral. That is what electricity we are getting is 230. That is wire connecting from the distributor to the consumer end, that wire, the connecting wire is called as service lines or service mains. Usually, this uh, service mains are classified into two different methods they are adopting. One is called as ORET line, the another one is called as underground line. There are certain advantage and disadvantage of both ORET and underground service mains. So what do you mean by the overhead service connections? Overhead service connection means the conductors are drawn or taken above the ground level. It is above the ground level that we are saying it is a com contemporary the usual practice in India. Overhead service means are the most common type in India. You are taking out the directly from overhead from the, the pole to the consumer end. That is what we are calling is overhead service line. The advantage of the ORED connections are first one is the extension of service line capacity is easy. So what do you mean by this? That is you have got presently I have got a load of 2 kilowatt. I have got one refrigerator, one washing machine, a 2 kilowatt of the heating load. Okay. Subsequently I am adding one more grinder or subsequently I am adding the the air conditioner then my load is increased previously i have got a load of 2 kilowatt suppose my load is increased subsequently after 2 or 3 years or 5 years to the 3 kilowatt or 4 kilowatt then what you have to do you have to upgrade your the input the connected load you have to notify to the, the state electricity board so that my load is increased from 2 kilowatt to 3 kilowatt the based on the 3 kilowatt, then your service line also be the enhanced, enhanced. That is very easy in the case of overhead transmission line. That is the older one which has capable of 2 kilowatt can be replaced very easily by 3 kilowatt or 4 kilowatt depending upon your load. That is very easy in the case of overhead line. The second advantage is fault location and rectification are easy that is it is seen actually if there is any short circuit occurs or anything there is a breakdown of any wire or something like that then it can be seen and it is rectified very easily in the case of overhead transmission line then that is the drawing the line from the the pole to the consumer end is very easy very easy with a guy wire support then you can draw the the phase and line wire from the pole to the the consumer end at the same time, it is cheap as compared to the underground system. Okay, these are the some of the advantage of the ORED transmission line. It is very easy to draw. It is very cheap and the maintenance is very easy. Okay, at the same time, it is the announcement of or change over from one particular to another load is also uh, the possible very easily and it is very economical. At the same time, it has got some disadvantages that uh, appearance it will not be so good as compared to the underground because it is underneath. But in the overhead line, it is it is look is not so ambience. Then the overhead space is affected. That is, suppose if the line is passed through your uh, your premises, then it is danger to the the human beings. Okay, then. It is whole and overhead space is the affected. Then affected by weather. That is, we know that is a open wire which is drawn from the, the pole to the, the premises. Then it is exposed to the sun. Then because of the heat and the rain, then the, the life of the wire or the service wire is goes on the decreasing. At the same time, because of heavy the wind or something like that, there is a possibility of the the disruption of the electricity also. Then another disadvantage of the overhead line is fault due to falling of the trees 
monkeys, birds and etc. That is, it is exposed to the, the atmosphere. Therefore, because of the falling of the trees and the monkeys and the birds, there is a disruption of or a discontinuity of the electricity to the, the consumer end. These are the, some of the, the disadvantages of the overhead transmission, uh, overhead um, system. Then underground service system is nothing but it is an underground service. Connections means conductors are drawn, taken below the ground. It is very difficult to install because you have to dig and you have to put the, the cables. Underground service means compared to the overhead service means. Once again, if you are comparing the advantages of underground connection system, uh, the first advantage is it has got a long life because the underground service are lifelong as it is permanent one and it is a one time investment because you are it is in the the underground not affected by weather it is not exposed to the, the atmosphere or sun, sunlight or rain or lightning or etc therefore it is not affected by the weather safety to the public it is not exposed to the the uh, the atmosphere as it is installed below the ground it is easy for the public as compared to the overhead service means it is it is not as safe in the case of overhead system it is used in metros and uh, corporates because there is no option other than the the underground because of the uh, construction that is a connection in the overhead construction is very very difficult they have to go for metro and corporate cities and the appearance is good that is a good appearance it is good for house appearance as compared to the underground service means it is it has got a very long life not affected by the weather safety to the public because not it is exposed and there is a only option for the metro and corporate cities because it is not possible there to draw the overhead line then it has got the good appearance the some of the disadvantages of underground connections are the fault location and rectifications are very difficult because it is under the the ground then where exactly it is a fault occurs you have to dig out you have to take out the cable and you have to find out the the fault it is a little bit cumbersome then the skilled labors are required for the installation as well as for the repair work then at the same time it is a costly that is a cable is costly at the same time that is the installation cost is also the increasing overall it is system is uh, costly it requires more time for erection and repair it is not an instant uh, system you can draw underground but it, it requires some time these are some of the the disadvantages of underground connections then some of the norms you have to follow when if you are laying down the or if you are trying the service means from the the distribution company then the code codes are one is the tapping you have to tap your service lines from the the overhead line only at the point of support that is a cross on in between there is a hang that is span in should know you can hook out and you have to draw the your supply you have to connect where there is a at the point of the support only you have to draw your the electricity or a service means you have to connect then the earth leakage circuit breaker you have to use when the your load is exceeding 5 kilo volt ampere that is a compulsory then lead in pipes are used for service connection that is for the from the drawing that is the lead in pipes are used for service connections these are the another this is another norm then you have to go for a three phase connections when if the your load is exceeding 10 kilo volt amperes if it is less than 10 kilo volt ampere load then we have got a single phase if it is exceeding 10 kilo volt you have to go for three phase system then the ground clearance system when the service line erected across the road or along the street should not be less than 5.7 meter above the ground level. you have to draw your service means such that the clearance from the service means to the ground is minimum 5.7 meters then the meter board the meter board should be always placed at the the entrance at the height of 1.5 meters from the ground level in the the consumer premises the meter earth should not be used for your earthing purpose that is the meter earthing is from the state electricity board 
then we have got another system or thing system from our own premises.